Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your word, ever new, ever fresh. Thank you for your spirit that will take every part of the word and apply it to every heart and every person. We pray, Lord, tonight your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, with our heart, with our mind, with our brain, with our thinking, we'll follow through your word, and the word will be of tremendous benefit to everyone. Fulfill your promise in the word. And the example we see in the word, we pray to lead us to have the same faith and the same trust and the same confidence. And as you have not changed, the power, the impact of the word will not change in our lives. Do good in every life tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody shout. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. And tonight we're looking at Mark chapter 5. It's a very familiar story, but it has not so familiar application. It's a passage we have read over and over, and we've heard many messages, especially revival, faith-building messages on the passage. But tonight we want to approach it from the teaching aspect so that every word and every promise and the performance of the word will register on every heart in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grow worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press and the crowd, in the multitude behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, if I may but touch, touch by faith, touch with confidence, touch with trust, touch with expectation, his clothes I shall be whole. And straightway, instantly, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body. She felt in her body after that touch that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, in the crowd, in the multitude, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And the church said, That's the story we're looking at tonight. And it's about the touch of faith that the woman had 
on the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we touch him or he touches us, there is always a demonstration of his power. And as we gather together, all the instances that we have in the Bible when people touched the Lord and when he, the Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and the very Son of God from heaven, when he touches anyone, like he will touch you tonight. There's always a demonstration of the miracle power of the Lord. Number one, there will be recovery. Whenever you touch him or he touches you, if you have been down, if you have been despondent, if there's disease or plague in your life, sickness you've been battling with, as to touch him and he touches you, there will be recovery. Number two, there will be restoration. You've gone far away from the Lord. And now you come to the Lord and you touch him by faith. Restoration will come in your life. Whatever you have lost, whatever you have missed, when your hand of faith touches him, there is restoration. The touch we're talking about tonight, which is the touch of faith. When he touches you and you receive that touch by faith, there'll be renewal. Give me a good amen. amen. When the Lord touches us, a renewal takes place. Any part of our system, from the spirit to the soul and to the body, he renews us. If you are weak, he will renew your strength. If you are down, he will lift you up and there will be renewal. You know, when Jesus touches us, there is regeneration. Regeneration means that your soul had been dead in sins and trespasses. And now the Lord touches you. And there is regeneration. He recreates your spirit. We can call it recreation. That the life of the spirit, the life of the soul, that had been away before, a renewal, regeneration, welcome. Sometimes you are not sure of who you are, where you are. And then you come to the Lord and you touch him by faith. You will touch him tonight. Then a touch of reassurance comes. You are down there. You are wondering how it is you will live the life that is confident and courageous and reassurance comes when he touches us the righteous one the holy one the mighty one the powerful one he touches us and the person who has been unrighteous before becomes righteous a touch of righteousness there are times you are weary you are tired you are worn out and then you say, if I can only touch him, and then you stretch forth your hand of faith, and you touch him, and there is refreshing that comes, and the weariness, and the dryness, everything vanishes away. Tonight, it will touch everyone. There will be recovery. There will be restoration. There will be renewal. There'll be regeneration, there'll be reassurance, there'll be righteousness, there will be refreshing as it touches us. Christ has not changed. He is still the same even today as it was in the past. Whether we touch him or he touches us, transformation will take place in our body 
in our soul, in our spirit, because his touch is always supernatural and things that were unthinkable, impossible before become possible, become reality in our lives. Supernatural things do happen when we touch him by faith and he transforms us in his faithfulness. As we look at the passage, the topic tonight is divine transformation through the touch of faith. You're not looking at him in the physical. And it's not in the physical or the crowd or the press or the multitude. But he says, where two or three are gathered together, he will be in the midst of them. If we are gathered in his name. And tonight, we are gathered in his name. We are studying his word. We want to see again his power, his authority. For Christ Jesus has the power. To manifest spiritually, to manifest physically, and to manifest emotionally even in your life. So tonight, as we look at the story of French, we look at it from the perspective of divine transformation through the torch of faith. On the one hand, there is the torch of faith, and then the result of that torch which is divine transformation. Connection between us and God. And then transformation will take place in every one of our lives. It will happen tonight. Three things we're looking at as we look at this story. Number one, a decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Decisive. There's no doubt about it. And it's definite. There is no maybe or but about it. A decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Point number two. The discerned, disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. The woman would not have known that Christ will know each immediately. In fact, the disciples did not know. They said, you see many people thronging you, pressing on you, and you're saying, who touched me? But he affirmed and reaffirmed and revealed over and over, somebody touched me. That was the discernment of the Spirit and the disclosure of the Spirit. They discerned Disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. Point number three. The desirable divine touch for a transforming renewal. That's the part that becomes applicable to you personally today. Desirable touch coming upon your life. A divine touch that is going to be manifest in your life. And it is for a transformational re a renewal, desirable, divine touch for a transforming renewal. Welcome to point number one, the decisive, definite touch for total recovery. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grow worse. She had had the problem, the plague, the disease, the sickness, the issue of blood for 12 years. And she wasn't just lying unconcerned. She had seen and she had sought many physicians, doctors of the day. 
and she spent much money. In fact, the record says she had spent all that she had, and yet there was no improvement. Then she heard of Jesus. The day you hear of Jesus, your salvation is very near. Your healing is very near. And your deliverance is very near. And the victory that you have been seeking for, and you have spent a lot of money, and you didn't have, that victory is very near, is very near today. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Why? For she said, If I may but touch, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I shall be whole. And straightway, that means immediately, that means instantaneously, straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body, this is real. This is definite. This is a great miracle. This is a visible miracle. And she knew it. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague a decisive, definite touch for total recovery. Look at that passage again. There are three things to find there. Number one, the unclean and incurable woman. That plague made her unclean. That plague was incurable. She had tried everything she could try. There was no cure. The unclean and incurable woman. Number two there. The unchangeable and infallible word. The unchangeable and infallible word. The word of God. That heaven and earth may pass away. But his word, the word of power, the word of authority, the word of healing, the word of faith. That word will not pass away. The unchangeable and infallible word. Number three, the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. The undeniable and irrefutable wonder. Look at verses 25 and 26 as we look at the unclean and incurable woman. 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. She was unclean. How? That plague, that disease, that issue of blood, according to the Levitical order, made her unclean. And that's why she sneaked behind. And tonight, any sin that makes any one of us unclean, and we've tried to be pure, tried to be healed, tried to be well, and we found that impossible. Tonight, all things are possible. I said all things are possible. You see it in your life. You feel it in your body. If it's your child, that child is well tonight. If it's your wife, you spent quite a lot, that wife is well tonight. It will make you whole. Jeremiah chapter 30. We're reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 12. For thus says the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. That's the word for that woman. Unclean because of the issue of blood. Incurable because she had spent everything she had, and she was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And here is what the Lord is saying. For thus says the Lord, thy bruise is incurable. And the wound is grievous. 
then he tells us in verse 13 there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up thou hast no healing mercy very true for that woman and very true for many people today that there is no care there is no healing medicine verse 15 why Christ thou for thine affliction thy sorrow is incurable all the cries all the fasting all the spending of money everything she tried the sorrow the sickness was incurable for the multitude of the iniquity because thy sins were increased i have done these things unto thee i have permitted it i've allowed it because of the way you have gone but thank god a change is coming today a change came for her healing came for her and that healing is very near but we need to seek his help look at psalm 108 verse 12 psalm 108 reading from verse 12 give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man we have tried we have sought we have gone to them we have given them money we have spent all that we have but vain is the help of man but Christ will help Christ will heal that thing that looks impossible Christ will make it possible in your life the knot that appears you cannot ravel you cannot untie you don't even understand why this why that Jesus is the answer Acts chapter 4 I read from verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other neither is there deliverance in any other neither is there relief in any other neither is there cure in any other neither is there victory in any other neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but thank god the woman heard about jesus and thank god you are hearing about jesus tonight the same yesterday and today and forever we're coming back to mark chapter 5 now we see the unchangeable word and the infallible word look at mark chapter 5 reading from verse 27 when she had heard of jesus she heard the word about jesus she had testimony about jesus she heard the word that brought faith in her when she had heard of jesus she came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if i may touch but his clothes i shall behold i shall behold what did he actually did she actually touch let's look at john chapter one in john chapter one reading from verse one in the beginning was the word that's talking about christ and the word was with god that's christ and the word was god that's christ the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him no wonder he healed everyone all things were made by him is the creator 
And if there's anything missing in your life, missing in your body, the Lord will create it tonight in Jesus' name. This Christ, the creator, will recreate you. This Christ, the healer, will heal you. This Christ, the savior, will save you. All things were made by him. And without him was, no, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Look at verse 14. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Christ is the word and is the unchanging, unchangeable word, immutable word and infallible word. And this woman heard of the word, heard of Christ and she believed like you are believing tonight and a change took place. A change is going to take place. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17, Romans 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That woman heard of Jesus, heard of the word, and faith came up in her. And as you hear about Christ, the word tonight, faith will rise up in your life. You will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. This word will turn your life around. This word will give you healing. This word will give you salvation. This word will give you power. This word will turn everything in your life around in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God, without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, here is a secret, when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which worketh effectually also in you that believe. It will work effectually in you. As you receive the word, not as the word of a man, but the word of the Almighty God Himself. And as you receive Jesus, the word that is able to do today what He ever had done. That word, that Christ, that Savior, that healer, that deliverer will work in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. The unclean and the incurable woman heard the unchangeable and the infallible word. And then she experienced the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. She received, she experienced the power of Christ that worked in her the undeniable and irrefutable wonder. And Christ is still the same. And his power is still the same. And his authority is still the same. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. His word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Let's come to Mark chapter 5 again. We're reading from verse 27 all through to verse 29. Mark chapter 5. Reading from verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, 
if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, somebody help me shout, straightway. Let me hear you say it with the preacher's voice. It will happen straightway tonight. It will happen immediately tonight. It will happen instantaneously tonight. And straight with the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That's how it happens always. And today is not an exception. Mark chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. Mark chapter 3 verse 10. For he had healed many, Christ, the healer, the deliverer, the savior. He had healed many, in so much that they pressed upon him to touch him, as many as had plagues. You know, some people think it's only this woman we're reading about in Mark chapter 5 that touched him. But many other people, when they had heard of him, they manifested the same faith and they touched him and their plagues were taken away. You will be among the number. Chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 54. Mark chapter 6, verse 54. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. And they ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages and cities and countries, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they the sick my touch if it were but the border of his coming you see that they had heard about other people touching him and when they touched him they were made whole and so they brought the sick even those who were so sick they couldn't walk by themselves they were laid on beds on couches and they pleaded with him that these sick people might touch him. Look at the last line there, verse 56. And as many as touched him, tell me, were made whole. Going to happen to you tonight. Everyone that touches him by faith is going to deliver, is going to heal them. Luke chapter 6. Reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. They came to learn, they came to hear, and they came to understand his teaching, and also to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, and the whole multitude the whole multitude, everyone here tonight, no exception tonight, every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl, this is our chance, this is my chance, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, you see that, it's not just one isolated person in Mark chapter 5. The whole multitude, everywhere he went, 
if he couldn't reach them, they tried to reach him. The whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue out of him and healed them. How many? All. And healed them. How many? All. What a healing. What a wonder. And what a miracle. What a transformation. The torch produced a miracle. And as you touch the Lord tonight, a miracle will be produced in your life in Jesus' name. What kind of miracle? Number one, incomparable miracle. Incomparable miracle. Look at the woman. She'd gone everywhere and she wanted healing. But there's no help. No physician could help her. No healer could help her. No prayer house could help her. No tradition could help her. No ceremony of the Jewish religion could help her. But then she touched Jesus immediately. Healing came. Number one, incomparable miracle of healing. Number two, irre irresistible healing. As soon as she touched, connection brought miracle immediately and tonight as you mention the name of Jesus nothing between you and Jesus no wall of demarcation there will be an irresistible miracle in Jesus name number three replaceable miracle you couldn't replace that miracle with any other thing that woman said I've been suffering for such a long time and I've not been able to get anything out of all the expenses I have made and now I want something and shall she turn Jesus Christ a miracle happened incomparable to anything that can ever happen in her life a miracle happened irresistible she couldn't resist it she had to come to Jesus to say and to confess it's me that touched you your miracle tonight is irresistible irreplaceable I will not trade this for anything. I will not exchange this for anything. I have this one. I've been looking for this for 12 years. And now it has come. An irreplaceable miracle. An indisputable miracle. You couldn't argue with the woman. No psychologist could argue with the woman. No therapist could argue with the woman. No neighbor could argue with the woman. I got this. I felt it in my body. And I know it is real. Indisputable. Number five, an irreversible miracle. She got it. Satan could not take it away. Evil spirits could not take it away. Evil power could not take it away. And the comments of people, criticism of people could not take it away. She got a miracle that was irreversible. Tonight, your miracle is irreversible. But you know, the woman couldn't understand. Yes, she got it. Yes, she received the miracle. And she must have been wondering, how is it? Even though I said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. It happened exactly as I believe. But for me, it is incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. I couldn't see any electricity flowing from the garment to the woman. I couldn't see any trace of anything flowing, like water flowing, like a fluid flowing, incomprehensible. And yet, it happened. It's going to happen. And it was indispensable. Indispensable. What can I do without this? How far can I go without this? This is a miracle that is necessary, indispensable in every life. Well, that's how the miracle of Jesus is every time. A miracle of, of salvation, the same. Miracle of healing, the same. Miracle of deliverance, the same. Miracle of dominion, the same. Miracle of the supernatural, the same. And the miracle you get tonight, the same. Incomparable, irresistible, irreplaceable, 
indisputable, irreversible, incomprehensible, indispensable. I welcome you tonight to Miracle Center. I welcome you tonight to the place of the power of God. He will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Come to point number two now. The discerned, disclosed touch by his truthful revelation. When it happened, only Christ and the woman knew. Peter did not know. The person standing by did not know, but she knew because she felt it in her body. And now Christ revealed it. He discerned it. He disclosed it. Look at it. Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 30. Mark chapter 5, verse 30. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself without being told. That's why he is God. He is the son of God and he is God. He knows all things even without telling him. He knows the death of sorrow and sadness that you may have. He knows everything about you. And as we are saying tonight, this is my night, he knows. As we are saying tonight, I will receive it tonight. He knows, he knows all things. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, pressing upon you. And thou seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done the same. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing her, what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And told him the truth. I'm happy tonight that I have a Savior who knows all things. I'm grateful to God tonight that I have a Redeemer who knows all things. Even before I know. Even before you know, he knows everything. He's Christ. He knows it all. The good and the bad, he knows. The upright and the ugly, he knows. The true and the false, he knows. He knows all things. The hidden and the revealed, he knows. The secret and the open. He knows each all. Nothing can be kept hidden from the Lord. All your anxiety, all your care, all your thoughts, all your problem, even the unbelief and the faith and the expectation and what you're thinking now, he knows everything. Nothing can be kept hidden from our Lord. All hidden actions, all hidden attitudes, all hidden atrocities, all hidden abominations are known to our God. He knows our actions of faith. He knows our acts of faithfulness. Everything will be revealed and rewarded. Actions of filthiness, he knows that too. Actions and acts of falsehood, he knows that too, and he will expose everything and punish everything. All unconfessed sins, he knows. All unrighteous secrets, he knows. All unclean habits, he knows. All unlawful relationships, he knows. All ungodly covenants, he knows. All unfaithful transactions, he knows and will be exposed and punished by him. The very fact that Christ knows everything should make us to live a life that is free and full and powerful. 
your life will be free your life will be powerful and you know whenever you are praying you should remember that what you are trying to tell the lord in prayer he knows about that already he knows the origin of the problem he knows the source of the problem he knows how the problem came and he knows how the problem will be taken away and tonight you'll discover while you are praying while he answers you he knows everything look at hebrews chapter 4 hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 for the word of god is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner he discerns he knows of the thoughts and the intents of the heart neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight all the multitudes were there a great crowd pressing upon him and yet he knew when the woman touched the garment and knew the woman that touched the garment and knew the purpose the reason why and knew what had happened neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do tonight he knows everything in your life he knows your desires he knows if and when you are sincere nothing can be hidden away from him jeremiah chapter 23 we're reading from verse 24 jeremiah chapter 23 verse 24 can any hide himself in secret places that i shall not see him look at that woman she came from behind and she touched the hem of Christ's garment and immediately Jesus knew somebody touched him because he's supernatural and because he's sovereign and because he's God look at this can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him says the Lord do I not feel heaven and earth says the Lord he knows you I said he knows you and there's no point hiding anything making make it open reveal your heart reveal your life to him if there is sin in your life you cannot hide he knows and he's the one to forgive he'll forgive as you call upon him in jesus name if the sickness is the one to heal and you cannot just say i have a problem tell him the name of the problem and if you know how it came tell him how that thing came he knows it already and when your revelation your confession matches his revelation deliverance will come in your life look at job chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 6 job chapter 26 verse 6 hell is naked before him and destruction has no covering any conspiracy somebody tries to make and the scene is a kind of imagine from hell the Lord knows about it. Every intention and every action, the Lord knows about it. Hell is naked before him. And destruction has no covering, no hiding place. Job chapter 34. We're reading from verse 21. Job 34 verse 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. 
the eyes of the Lord upon the ways of man. You might hide in secret and do something, and you think nobody will know this. It's recorded in heaven already. He knows everything. For the eyes, for his eyes are upon the ways of man. And he seeth all his goings. Verse 22. There is no darkness, no shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. We're thankful to God that the God whom we serve knows everything. The Christ who is our Savior knows everything. He knows your thought. He knows your mind. He knows your action. He knows where you are being. He knows what you are doing. And he knows the reason why you are doing what you are doing. And he knows your thought of faith. He knows your action of faith. He knows you're depending upon Him. And if you believe in the Lord tonight, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Psalm 33. In Psalm 33, I'm reading from verse 13. Psalm 33, verse 13. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. Nothing escapes his view. He knows it all. The woman came from behind and didn't know that Christ would have seen from behind. You might think you are behind a wall, behind a curtain, behind a smoke screen, and you do what you do. The Lord in Bastachina looketh from the heavens. And beholdeth all the sons of men from the place of his habitation. He looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. He knows. He considers all their works. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 90, verse 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. They're known to him. All our actions, good actions are known to him. Bad actions are known to him. Hidden actions are known to him. Revealed public actions are known to him. It says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. He knows each all. Nobody can hide anything from him. Don't hide, don't hide. Just come as you are. And if you need forgiveness, he will forgive you. If you need healing, he will heal you. If you need victory, he'll give you the victory. Psalm 139. Psalm 1. 139, look at verse 2. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Before that woman came, while she was thinking, I'm going to touch him. And if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole afar off. Even before she came, while thinking about that, Jesus already knew. Before you came here tonight, your expectation, he knows. While we're singing crosses, and you say, let him touch me tonight. This problem must be removed tonight. He knew even before you started thinking that way. And while you're sitting down there now, and you're saying, tonight is my night. He has seen you there. And he knows you're there. And he's going to fulfill the expectation of faith in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. Verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? And whither shall I flee from thy presence? Verse 11. If I say surely, the darkness shall cover me. 
even the night shall be light about me you cannot cover yourself in darkness and think the lord will not see ye verse 12 the darkness hideth not from thee but the night shineth as the day the darkness and the light are both alike unto thee the lord knows i said the lord knows we come to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 14 and verse 15. John chapter 11. Reading from verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus, is dead and i am glad for your sakes that i was not there to the intent ye may know ye may believe nevertheless let us go unto him lazarus was sick and he had told them lazarus is asleep we'll go and wake him up he'll wake you up and whatever is dead in your body, in your life, in your brain, in your family, it'll touch, it'll revive you tonight. And so when he didn't understand, he told them plainly, he said, Lazarus is dead. And you know I'm not there, and yet I know he has died. Let us go there, we can still do something. Even in that desperate situation, since he knows that it has happened, he will still do something in your life. Look at John chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 30. John chapter 16, verse 30. Now I wish sure that thou knowest all things. They have been following Jesus all these years. And now Jesus reveals something, what was in their heart. And he said, even our thoughts, even our thinking, even our private discussion, you knew that? Now we are sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. He knows all about you. And he's going to fulfill his word in your life. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I read from verse 2. Revelation chapter 2. And we're reading the first part of verse 2. Look at that. Chapter 2. It says, I know thy works. Your words, he knows. Your works, he knows. Your thoughts, he knows. Your action, he knows. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I know, verse 13. In verse 13, I know thy words where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest past my name. And has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful witness and matter, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. He knows. Tonight he knows. I said, Tonight he knows. Verse 19. In verse 19, I know thy works and charity and faith and service and thy patience 
and thy works and thy last and the last of them more than the first he knows each all look at chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 verse 1 and unto the angel of the church in Sardis right these things says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars I know thy works till the end he knows he knows everything verse 8 I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man shall shut it for thou hast a little strength I know the level of strength you have and has kept my word and has not denied my name I know verse 15 I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would thou art cold or hot very clear that Jesus knows everything about us your concerns your desires and you're wanting what you want tonight what you desire tonight the Lord knows everything he will satisfy every longing soul in Jesus name amen point number three now the desirable the divine touch for a transforming renewal we're coming back to mark chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 34 mark chapter 5 verse 34 and he said unto her daughter thy faith has made thee whole thy faith has made thee whole you didn't say amen to that one your faith tonight will make you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. How did she show faith? How did she demonstrate faith? She heard what she had others to have heard. But others did not take any action. They just said, Jesus is wonderful, but no action. Jesus is great, but no action. Jesus is a miracle worker, no action. Jesus is savior, but no action. Jesus is redeemer, but no action. Look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead. Being alone, it is a stretching force of the hand, saying, I have heard of Jesus. He has healed other people. He has saved other people. He has redeemed other people. And it is based on faith. And I believe in him this moment. And I demonstrate my faith. She put her faith into action. Even so, faith, if it had not worked, says dead, being alone. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Faith without action. Faith without works is dead. Verse 26. First the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works. Faith without action. Faith without touch. Faith without works is dead also your faith will not be dead faith active faith visible faith and faith that will bring miracle in your life in jesus name look at hebrews chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 2 hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them why not be mixed with faith in them that had it they didn't personalize the word of god 
they didn't say that's for me they didn't internalize the word of god and say the possibilities of faith is exactly for me it was not mixed for faith in the heart of them that heard therefore it didn't profit them are you there at the bible study and you hear everything you, know, you are hearing sound but you are not taking the word by faith applying it to yourself and here you are you have a serious problem an incurable problem a problem you had gone about and you had tried many things and yet they didn't work and here is your chance and the word is not mixing with faith in the heart the word will mix with faith in your heart and that faith visible that faith active that faith that is going to do going to act according to the faith will do something in your life acts chapter 3 Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. And his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. Faith in his name will make you strong tonight. Whom you see and know, yea, yes, the faith which is by him have given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. In our presence tonight, before you leave, faith will work in your life. Faith will heal you. Faith will deliver you. Not faith in yourself, not faith in your own ability, not confidence in yourself, faith in Christ, faith in his name that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and everything that torments will clear away from your life. The faith in Christ saves, and that faith in Christ heals. That faith in Christ gives us the victory. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 For by grace are you saved through faith Without active faith Nobody can be saved But a person who believes Christ died for me That's not enough Action What's the action? Confession of your sin And as you confess your sin And turn away from your sin Then something will happen forgiveness will come salvation will come new life will come and victory over sin will come in your life in jesus name by faith are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god look at acts chapter 15 acts chapter 15 I'm reading now from verse 9. Acts 15, verse 9. It says in verse 9, And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Anything we need, everything we need tonight, we're going to touch the Lord by faith. I said, we'll touch the Lord by faith. As we touch the Lord, he himself will touch you. He will touch me tonight. Me, me, me. He will touch me tonight. Look at what the touch of the Lord does. We're looking at Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Here is Jacob. He was praying. He had a long-standing problem. The problem had been there for many years. Esau had threatened, he was killing. And after the many years, that threat was still there until he began to pray. And as he prayed, 
Look at what happened. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 25, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he, the angel, touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as the result was him. It was that touch that went to work on Esau, and Esau, the enemy, was changed to be a friend. Even when he saw Jacob, he ran to him and kissed him and wept. His heart had been tender because of the divine touch. He'll give you a divine touch tonight. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. First Kings chapter 19 verse 5. Here is Elijah, tired, weary, fainting, discouraged, in despair, wanting to give up, wanting to die. But look at this, a torch revived him. That torch will come to you tonight. Verse 5, And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, Behold, the angel, an angel touched him, touched him, and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink. And he laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and, tell me, touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too long for thee. The strength for the journey ahead. You receive the strength in Jesus' name. And he arose and he did eat and drink. And went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. The man that wanted to die, he didn't die anymore. He was taken up with chariots of fire. He experienced the rapture. You will not die on timely days. Everything the Lord still wants you to accomplish, you will accomplish. As it touches you tonight, revival will come in your soul. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a life coal in his hand which he had taken with tongues from up the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this has touched thy lips the burning coal from the altar of God will touch your life tonight. And thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. He will send you. And the errand you run for the Lord will be fruitful in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, out of the womb, I sanctified thee, set thee apart, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, 
Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Is the Lord talking to anybody here today? The Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and did what? Touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down. The word of authority has come in your mouth. As the Lord touches your mouth, you pull down every stronghold. And to destroy, you'll destroy every work of the devil. And to throw down any chain, any yoke, you'll grab it, you'll throw it away. And to build, you will build your family. And to plant, good planting of the Lord will be upon your life. Daniel chapter 9. I read from verse 21. Daniel chapter 9. The touch of the Lord. The divine touch. And when that touch comes, it gives us total transformation. Daniel chapter 9, verse 21. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, whilst I was speaking in prayer, that's how it's going to happen tonight. While you're still praying and speaking in prayer, even the man, actually angel Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me, touched me, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding chapter 10 of daniel i'm reading from verse 8 daniel chapter 10 verse 8 therefore i was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption weakness and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words. And then I heard the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. And behold, and hand touched me. It will happen. Behold, and hand touched me, and set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, what's your name? I said, What's your name? O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. A woman greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now said. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, fear not. Who is that? Fear not, I said, who is that? Fear is cancelled from your life. 
For from the first day that thou didst search thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Verse 15. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. And behold, one, like the similitude of the sons of men, touched my lips. That's a touch tonight. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision, my sorrows are turned upon me. And I have retained no strength. I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me straightway, there remains no strength in me. Neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again. Then there came again, and what happened? And touched me, one, like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me, and said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken, I was strengthened. I was strengthened. I am strengthened. And said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Strength has come upon you now. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, I'm looking at verse 12. Luke chapter 7, verse 12. And now when he came near to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. It's always like that. He has compassion on you tonight. And said unto her, and says unto you, and says unto us, and says unto your family, weep not. And he came, and he came, and did what? Touched the beard. And they that bear him stood still. And after touching the coffin, he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up. Your problems are solved. And began to speak and delivered him to his mother. Tonight, a divine touch is coming upon you. One, a touch of recreation. He will recreate you. I said he will recreate you. Two, a touch of reconciliation. As he touches you tonight, it's a touch of love. It's a touch from heaven. It will reconcile you to the heavenly Father. It will touch your soul and touch your spirit. It's a touch of recreation. There's a touch of reconciliation. A touch of re-empowerment. It will re-empower you tonight. I said it will empower you tonight. All weakness will vanish away. Frailty will vanish away. Drooping will vanish away. And sluggishness will vanish away. A touch of re-empowerment. Number four, a touch of refining. Refining. It happened to Isaiah. He said, I'm unclean. And then the life cold touched him. And all that was taken away tonight. A touch of revitalization. Look at Daniel. Weak. No strength. 
and he couldn't stand up. He was lying down there. He said, I feel as if everything within me is into corruption. And the hand touched him. Revitalization came. It's coming tonight. And look at that boy, the only child of the mother, a widow, being carried out. And Jesus touched the coffin, a touch of resurrection. Resurrection. And then there's going to be a touch of reproduction. The Lord will reproduce something good in your life tonight. Nobody is living here empty-handed. You will touch the Lord and the Lord will touch you. In your soul, the Lord will touch you. In your spirit, the Lord will touch you. In your body, the Lord will touch you. And everything that is weary and weak and it's like I can't move forward again, new strength and new power is coming tonight. And then Daniel said, now I can rise up. And he said, I rose up on my feet and I said, I am strengthened. And I'm looking at you rising up upon your feet and strength has come and power has come and authority has come. And he says, it's going to touch you tonight. You remember that what woman said she said if i may but touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole." why don't you make up your mind tonight your part all the various areas of touch your lips your mouth your eyes your ears and it can touch your spirit touch your soul touch every part of you and as it touches you tonight there's going to be revitalization there's going to be restoration. There's going to be recreation. And there is going to be resurrection. There is going to be reproduction. The Lord is touching you tonight. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Are you like Jacob? And there's an Esau that is after your life. Are you like Jacob? And there is a fear that I say is like a spell upon your life. Are you like a Jacob? And it is like you are afraid of what might happen when you meet Esau. Let him touch you here tonight. And then you can go out with confidence and courage. You can go out in power. And you know, you know, because he has touched you, there's going to be reconciliation between you and Esau. Reconciliation between you and your husband. Reconciliation between you and your wife. That's what we're waiting for. A touch of the Lord. A touch of the Lord. A touch of the Lord. And reconciliation will come between Jacob and Esau. Between husband and wife. Between wife and husband. Between parents and children. Between leader and follower. A touch tonight. A touch tonight. A touch tonight. Elijah was weak. Elijah was discouraged. Elijah felt there's nothing in front. Elijah felt the ministry has come to an end. Elijah felt there's nothing to live for again. Let me die. Let me die. Let me die. But then a torch came and revival came. A torch came and renewal came. That torch is coming to you tonight. If you're discouraged, all you need is a torch. Is a torch. If you are down, all you need is a torch. If you are in despair, all you need is a torch. If you are thinking of ending life and ending ministry, all you need is a torch. If you are thinking of running away because a Jezebel is running after you, all you need is a torch tonight. It touches our souls. It touches our spirit. It touches our personality. It touches us at the point of weakness. At the point of being weary. It touches us. And when that touch comes upon you, revival will come. Renewal will come. Are you like an Isaiah? Isaiah, unclean leaves, unclean words. Unclean thoughts, and you want to be free. And you are telling the Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips, a woman of unclean thoughts, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. I don't appreciate all these unclean things coming to me, coming my way. I want to be clean, I want to be pure, I want to be refined. 
I want to be holy. I want to be circumcised in my heart through and through. I want a refinement in my soul, in my spirit, in my body, in my language, in my words. A touch of the coal of fire will refine you tonight, will reform you tonight, and will revive you tonight, and purify you tonight, and sanctify you tonight. Strength will be reproduced in you. Power will be reproduced in you. Are you like Jeremiah? I cannot talk. I'm shy. I'm fearful. The people you sent me to, they're like they're not giants. I'm like a grasshopper. I'm afraid to talk to them. I feel little. I feel small. I feel childish. I feel poor. I feel incapable. I feel I cannot do anything. It says it's touching your mouth tonight. And it puts the words in your mouth. A touch, a touch, a touch that will bring reassurance. A touch that will bring righteousness. A touch that will bring power. A touch that will bring courage. A touch that will bring confidence. Let him touch you tonight. Let him touch you tonight. Daniel, I've been praying 21 days. And prayed and prayed and wondered, will God ever answer? Ever answer? Will God ever reverse, reverse my situation? Will I hear from the Lord again? Will there be revelation anymore? And then a divine touch came. A touch. A touch. A divine touch. And revelation came. A divine touch. And revitalization came. A divine touch. And refining came. Let him touch you tonight. Touch your soul, touch your spirit, touch your body. That woman had been sick, blood flowing out ceaselessly for 12 years. She had become emaciated, weak, unclean, unacceptable, was not beautiful again to the family. But she said, there is still solution and the solution is in a touch she heard of jesus jesus the healer jesus the deliverer jesus the redeemer and jesus the power of god in man jesus who is able to change everything in her life she heard of jesus savior healer, deliverer, master, king of kings, lord of lords. She heard of Jesus and then faith came in her. If I may touch but his garment, if I can only touch his garment tonight, I shall be made whole. He's still healing the sick today. Is still delivering your prayers today. Is still the miracle worker today. Jesus anointed of the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. Healing all, healing all, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And still the same. God says, I'm God, I change not. And Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. It will touch you tonight and then you're made whole. It's a touch of recovery. A touch of recovery. And he wants to give you that recovery tonight. A touch of restoration. He will restore you tonight. Every strength you have lost. Every virtue you have lost. All the courage you have lost. All the confidence you have lost. It's a night of the touch of recovery. A touch of restoration. 
He'll bring you back to fellowship. Your back's leading, come and touch him. Touch his love. Touch his mercy. Touch his goodness. Touch his grace. Receive the grace of God. There'll be a touch of restoration. There'll be a touch of renewal. A touch of renewal. You renew your commitment. You will renew your consecration. You will renew your determination. You will renew the strength, inner strength in you. Give you regeneration. New birth. New life. Righteousness. A touch of reassurance. Well, that touch, it tells you, you are mine. I am yours. You are mine. I am yours. A touch of righteousness. A touch of refreshing. A touch of refreshing. A touch of refreshing. Things are going to be different in your life. After tonight, touch him and he's touching you now. Touch him and he's touching you now. Something that never happened before will happen. Something incomparable, it will happen. Something irresistible, it will happen. Something irreplaceable, it will happen. You're not going to exchange the experience of tonight. You're not going to exchange it for anything else in your life. An indispensable miracle. An irreversible miracle. An incomprehensible miracle. An indispensable miracle. That's why you are here tonight. For a divine touch. Touch him and he will touch you. Touch him and he will touch you. Say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. You are no respecter of persons. Lord, I believe. Faith without works is dead. Faith without action is dead. Faith without confession is dead. Faith without the right attitude is dead. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Do it in my life tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Children of God, conquerors and overcomers, in Jesus' name we pray. You have touched him. He has touched you. Don't worry about how you feel or what you feel. Don't worry about what you sense or what you don't sense. He has promised he cannot fail. His power cannot fail. His promise cannot fail. His grace cannot fail. And a supernatural action cannot fail. You have touched him tonight and he has touched you. He touched me. He touched me. Where are you? He touched me. Where are you? He touched me. Where are you? He touched me. That touch will be effectual tonight. Father, in Jesus' name. Your Father to Jesus, our Lord. Your Father to every one of us. You love everyone. Your mercy is for everyone. Your power is for everyone. Your grace is for everyone. And the divine touch tonight is for everyone. Lord, I rejoice with all your people. Your people will never be the same again in Jesus' name. 
touch their soul draw them nearer unto yourself break down the wall of partition between any sinner and yourself tonight in jesus name give every sinner a touch of grace a touch of love a touch of mercy a touch of reconciliation a touch of salvation save them in jesus name give them assurance a touch of reassurance that now they belong to you they are saved in jesus name every backslider give them a touch of your love a touch of receiving them a touch of reconciliation a touch of restoration let them feel your love in their hearts tonight in jesus name whisper to their ears by your spirit i am yours and you are mine lord i pray they will be partakers of abundant grace and forgiveness tonight in jesus name all your children brothers and sisters young and old i pray for them now i'm asking lord your children who are feeling weak who are feeling weary who are feeling tired who are feeling can i go on can i not go on touch them tonight in jesus name a touch of power a touch of the supernatural a touch of strength a touch of refining and a touch of renewal and a touch of resurrection do it in their lives in jesus name lord nobody ever was sick and went back from you the same still sick impossible tonight there's healing for everyone there's deliverance for everyone whatever 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 the problem blind eyes deaf ears withered hands kidney that is not functioning and any part of the body that is not working appendicitis impotence whatever touch everyone tonight in jesus name long-standing sickness 12 years of sickness 38 years of sickness 40 years of paralysis lord touch everyone tonight in jesus name those who are weak those who are impotent those who are paralyzed those who are lying down helplessly anywhere and everywhere now give them a touch raise them up and anything that is dead not functioning in their body let the power of resurrection come with that touch in jesus name our children who have forgetful memory like the brain is dead and they are not able to perform like we expect as parents lord i pray revive their brains tonight touch their brains tonight quicken their brains tonight and those subjects they are not able to understand as to quicken them and make their brains alive they will understand their grades will come higher their results will come higher I pray for anyone that is having forgetful memory who are getting old and because we are old I can't remember that I can't remember that oh Lord touch the old people elderly people tonight in Jesus name the sicknesses anyone has taken to the hospital to doctors and it's like well you also going uh, read my role and there has been no healing healing tonight deliverance tonight power tonight authority tonight send forth your word of power and healing heal everyone tonight in jesus name 
take sorrow away from every life. Infirmity away from every life. Lord, once again, make tonight an unforgettable night of touch. Touch your people. As they touch you, and as they are going out, they go out with their miracles. Indisputable miracle. Incomparable miracle. Irresistible miracle. Incomprehensible miracle. An irreversible miracle. Irreplaceable miracle. Indisputable, indispensable. Do it in every life right now. Put testimony in every mouth. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. The Lord has answered the prayer for you.